Hello there, I would like to welcome you to another Rahalastapa with me, Rich Terring, and my guest, John Park in The Beast. Look, you might not know who this guy is because he's a York City, ex York City football player, uh, and has played for a lot of teams in all, pretty much every level uh, of the game. Um, I'm not hugely into football, I love York City, uh, but this guy is well worth your time. I have to say, he is quite a character uh, and does um, a brilliant podcast as well, which we'll talk about in the show. Uh, and uh, he, he gets up to, to some shenanigans. I think you're going to like him. Okay. Uh, so, uh, look, if you like this stuff, why not go, far, go to gofasterstripe.com. You can buy some DVDs, some downloads, some books, which will help us make more stuff, you can still buy the Rubik's Cube, no, not the Rubik's Cube, you can't buy that, sorry, you can buy the Trump card game, it's very entertaining, fully playable, lots of all my favourite guests, uh, and you can also become a badger, go com slash badges, and help us make more podcasts, all that money goes into making more podcasts, uh, if you like the podcast, chuck in some money, we'll make you more entertainment, I mean, it seems a pretty good deal to me, three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, whatever you want, you get a different colour badge, the more you give, and maybe a few little bonus extras if you give a bit more coming up later in the year. So, but you get plenty of stuff even for the three pounds a month, like backstage videos, uh, you can see the Snoopy tournament, lots of stuff. Oh no, my son's going to come and attack me. I'm, I'm going to have to go. Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy Rahela Stapa with John Parkin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grand Opera House in York again for another week. We're back. We loved it so much last week. We've come back another week. It's a different week. Please welcome a man who's terrified about being in the most haunted city in Europe. It's Richard Herring. Hello. How are we doing, York? Oh, God. You are so much better than last week's audience. Blood from a stone. It was like blood from a stone last week. <laughs> Terrible they were. <laughs> Welcome to Richard Herring's Lynching Shambles Tourist Podcast. Yay! Just anyone who's going to see Harry Potter, where Harry Potter came from, we just get, we're just going to get, it's a different idea for the podcast. We just drag him in and lynch him and then we just all say someone came in and did that like in Murder in the Orient Express. We'll get away with it if we all, if we all just say it was someone else. <laughs> Uh, but I was talking to the Duke of York the other day, your Duke of <laughs> Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, your Duke. They love <laughs> in York. They love <laughs> They love <laughs> so much that whoever's the best at being a <laughs> in York, they make them the Duke of York. That's their little thing. That's uh, they sort of honour them in that way. He's had 10,000 <laughs> He marched them up the hill, marched them down, <laughs> up and down, so they were so confused they didn't know where, where, what was up and what was down. Then he what's going on. Some of that's going to get bleeped. <laughs> anyway, who calls it Rahela I don't know if that's going to... That's going to... That's going to catch on. So, uh, <laughs> it's a great place, York. <laughs> Aside from that, I mean, you know, Leeds, Jimmy Savile, it's a terrible... It's, a ter it's just the worst... I'm, I'm ashamed to be from Yorkshire, I have to say, but I am, and there's nothing I can do about it. Hey, it's the most haunted city in Europe. Did you know that fact? I don't know how they work that out. Because, you know, you, you have to presumably, you know, do some kind of questionnaire for the ghosts in each town. <laughs> what if they just don't come out in, in a different city? I don't know. Have you, who's seen a ghost? Just by cheering, who has seen a ghost in York? Cheer now. <laughs> the most haunted city. <laughs> It. No one has seen a ghost. <laughs> Terrible. Um, did you know it's legal to shoot a Scotsman on Sunday with a bow and arrow in New York? Do you know that? So I'm, I'm leaving tonight because if I go out and do my Scotch accent, <laughs> it's going to be a terrible thing. Right, we're going to uh, we're going to crack straight on with this week's guest. We've got a fantastic uh, guest for you. He's probably best known. Uh, which one am I going to choose? It's kind of slightly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say he's best known for pooing in a bath in Magaluf. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, will you please welcome the fantastic, the beast, is John Parkin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you sit, sit down here with the microphone, just talking to the microphone. Pick that up and talking to I'm hoping you'll fit. These chairs are quite tight on me, so are you in? Is it snug? I've shit in plenty more buffs as well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk. I'm sure that story will come up, but uh, it's lovely to have you here. I'm a massive fan of your work. I was, I'm a, if you can call it that, kicking the ball around. Uh, it's... it's just not fucking hard work, is it? <laughs> This is very hard work, John. You can, and you do know you've got a podcast. Damn, I can't pretend. Um, uh, no, I'm very excited to have you on. That's why I've just been cheeky. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite scared about whether I'll get to the end. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Um, but uh, I'm a York City supporter. And obviously, you've had a couple of stints at York. Uh, and, and, you're in, and ended your days there. I was saying I saw you play a team that I can't remember the name of. And you said in your book, which is fantastic. We'll talk about more that when you were playing in non-league football, often you were quite surprised to find out what teams there were. And you didn't, you didn't recognise them. I did not know. So we were playing a certain team, and I did not know geographically where on earth it were. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does get confusing down there, so we can at least thank York for this terrible run of form to make us better aware of the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> They've done wonders for my geography. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, you're, it's... I sort of have this recurring dream, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good about at football. About me? I know, it's about, it sort of is about you. I have this recurring dream where I'm playing for York City, but it's me as a 52-year-old fat man. Do you ever wonder if that's what's been happening to you? Um, I were a 37-year-old fat man. <laughs> But, it's, but I, I was saying this to you backstage. I think, um, you know, you have a kind of reputation amongst the fans. This, they feed the beast. They all know about what you are as a player. Is quite an orthodox way of uh, training, as you talk about again in the book, which is called Feed the Beast. Um, so they know that you, you sort of you prepare for matches by not in the most traditional way that we would associate modern-day footballers with, I would say. I would say. <laughs> you... you Friday nights, yeah. Friday nights, uh, I used to stay, obviously stay in hotels and, and stuff like that before games and I'd have fish cakes, a Marriott burger, chips, Saturday morning I'd have a full English. Yeah. And by the way, I weren't at fucking York City then by the way, I were in the, a decent league in the championship. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a bit harsh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, but that's just what, that's just what I did. Yeah. Uh, whether it was right or wrong, it, it seemed to work. Yeah. And because you, in the book, which is really fun, it's, I think the, the book, as I was saying, getting to you backstage, but it's, it's unusual for someone who isn't, um, you know, like a, a world famous player in the Premiership all the time to write their autobiography. So it's quite unusual to get the story of someone. And you've played in, all, in pretty much every division we've got at one time or another. But so you've been up and down, you've, you've really had that whole experience as a footballer, but we don't get to hear those stories of what it's like to, to be, do we? Because we hear about Beckham or, or someone like that, and we don't get to hear about the, I mean, I want to say sort of journeyman footballer, but that's... You'd be right, yeah. you'd be right, so yeah. But that's, that's, that's kind of a really interesting perspective. And, we, and also, we don't get to hear many working-class people write in their autobiography. So it's incredible you've got this opportunity to... I won't even say we're working class. I'd say we're probably a little bit lower than that today. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's a really fascinating book. Uh, I think even if, you don't, if you're not interested in football, I don't think that even matters. Would you say? Because it's, cause it's about your, yeah, it's about probably, your life. Probably not. I would say there's only... 70% seven, of it is not actually football related. No. Uh, I mean, who wants to hear about fucking Gary Neville playing in the European Cup final. <laughs> Bollocks, innit? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Playing the European Cup final, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Went there, we played, we won. Yeah. I want to hear about Gary Neville shagging and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously it's never, that's never going to come out, so no. that's, that's you, why mine were a little bit different. Your book's very honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... And you say it's not about football, a lot of it's about food. And my favourite bits are about food. That's why you like the book so much. <laughs> I've lost two stone this year, so imagine what it was like before. Just another three uh, to go. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone up half. Uh, but, 
But my favourite story in the whole book is you going to a meeting with the chairman of the clubs and they go, they're taking you out to dinner and they're going to pay for dinner and then you, they, they go straight to mains and the story is you're disappointed because you didn't get a starter. Furious. Yeah. Absolutely furious. And so furious is in your book. Yeah. And that is my favourite bit yeah. of the book. I was actually, I was actually a premiership footballer yeah. then. Yeah, I was, I weren't, but I was classed as a premiership footballer. And uh, I went to speak to the chairman and the manager at Preston. Uh, and I trained in the morning at Stoke, travelled up. Uh, so we'd take you out for Italian. I'm thinking, oh, fantastic, brilliant. Even if I don't sign, I've got a free fucking meal, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the menus, the menus come. Uh, obviously, I, I, I like a, I like a pint, but I had to order water. There's the first yeah. shitter. <laughs> uh, so the the, the, waist, the waitress comes over. Uh, obviously, I let the chairman of the football club who's hopefully going to sign us and the, the manager, and they just went straight to mains. Yeah. <laughs> Who fucking goes out <laughs> for food and skips the starters? Yeah. Never, I've never done it before. <laughs> so I'd eaten in Stoke at probably one o'clock, and yeah. this is half eight, nine o'clock at night. So I, I had the spag ball, I thought that's the, probably the best thing I can order. And uh, I had my chat with the manager and the, the chairman, and everything went fantastic. I thought, I'd, I'll travel back down to Stoke tonight, save going home to travel back in the morning. Gets on the, gets on the motorway, I've seen the Golden Arches. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm in. <laughs> so I had, a big, I had a big Matt Knowles on the way back down <laughs> to Stoke. Fortunately, so the spag ball was your starter, that's, that's fine. Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a spag ball starter for a McChicken sandwich and two double cheeseburger men. <laughs> but, I mean, you have... You're a very popular player with the fans, I think, and with the other players. Because you've got this honesty. I mean, you were talking, you're a cheeky guy. You're, you're, you're a bit of a prankster uh, as well. But, and, but this, the idea that you can be like a, like a professional footballer and you get to your summer holidays and you basically go, right, I'm, I'm having a summer holiday and, and start drinking more or less, right? I mean, you would, not that you'd stop drinking particularly, but... Yeah, but... To be fair, I, never, I, I always choose to drink at the right times. Yeah. So a Saturday, Sunday and Wednesday. Right. So they're, they're the right times. Yeah. If, there's, if there's bad times, it's Thursday, Friday. So I used, to, I used to leave off then. But no, the summer for me was... <laughs> I'd, believe it or not, people had worked harder, but I drafted my balls off for 10 months. Yeah. Solid. So for them two months, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do and fucking relax. Yeah. Um, you used to get here on, on like the first day of pre-season, obviously, lads are nervous thinking what we're going to do, have we put any weight on and stuff. And the question is, uh, have you done much? That's the question that everybody, yeah. have you done much? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've done a few runs, few runs here, few runs here. Have you done much? Fucking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I had a sweat on, apart from lying on the sun lounge, you know, in your belly button, <laughs> and you're tapping it. The last time I had a sweat on from exercise was the last time I played. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what I would like to think, you know, if I was a footballer, that's what I'd like to think I would do. But it worked for you, and you say you didn't want to do weights, upper body, you never did upper body weights. No. Because you're, you're a big guy, right? So you just make you a bigger, a bigger guy, in a way. Yeah, I mean, and I couldn't run it as it were. No. But if I didn't <laughs> much of it. Uh, yeah, I used to, so many times we've, I used to go into new clubs and the fitness coach said the, the manager wants you to uh, do some weights and lose some timber and stuff and, and I just said look I tell you what right if you think I need to do weights me and you take, take us clothes off get on the training pitch we'll have a naked wrestle <laughs> <laughs> if you beat me I'll start doing weights <laughs> if I beat you you can shove them up your fucking ass <laughs> and the other shove them up their ass <laughs> And you, you know, you scored uh, uh, 225 goals in your career, something like that. So well over 200 goals. So it was, and you was in your last couple. Of, well, one of the last seasons, you had 25, 25 goals in that penultimate season, I think. Yeah. So you were still knocking them in. I, were, I think I were actually all right. Yeah. Didn't you? you know, like when I when I look back. <laughs> at, yeah. At the time, I thought oh, I'm I'm not fucking great here. Uh, but as I said, when I look back. 
I were actually all right. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been better, but I won't have changed my life, I don't think. No, the, the book's all about how you wouldn't, wouldn't change, and it's, you know, there's a part of you thinking, oh, John, you know, God, if you just... You know, you could go for this, you could train a bit harder, you could cut down on the pork pies a bit and, and, and push on. You know, you get to the Premiership and you play one game for, uh, in the League Cup or something like that, isn't it? You don't, you, so you're, you're a Premiership footballer. Uh, so, you know, you get that far. It's, 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 it's sort of, do, you, do you think you might have got further if you'd, if you'd done things differently? I probably would, I probably yeah. would have done, but... I. I... <sighs> I wouldn't have wanted to be a premiership footballer where if I fell out of a nightclub, which happened three or four times a month, <laughs> be on the back page or the front page of the papers. Yeah. I'm totally, totally content with... I had a, a very good career for a lot of years. Yeah. Which is more than I could have ever thought about when I was 13, 14. So that's, that's how I look at it. I don't... I don't regret anything really. No, you're, you're well, you, and you. I think a lot of the appeal of you as a, a player and a person is that you're uh, totally yourself. You're very honest. I mean, except when you're lying. Uh, but uh, I had to lie on yeah, many occasions. <laughs> you did lie a lot, but you're very honest in the book. So the book reveals a few things that you maybe hadn't told people. Uh, but it's it's you know there's that there's the sense where the the manager's sometimes keeping you there for the camaraderie, but also when you come into clubs, and especially the manager, if you like the manager, you make a difference with that team. You know, you, you made a lot of difference. You made a lot of difference with, with York, even though York did get relegated that season. They nearly yeah. didn't get relegated. They, I mean, they, very, they, <laughs> they, very, they very nearly, that, that, they very nearly didn't get relegated. And it was incredible that they, it was, it's gutting in the book when you remember it, but it's like the last kick of the game of another game that, that relegates York after after you guys have really dug them out of a massive hole. Yeah, it was that was the the worst uh, the worst thing that happened in my career. Um, I thought I thought like it's the second worst. Getting relegated was the worst. The worst was realizing we got into the game in three weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so instead of going on as holidays, we got to play at fucking Wembley <laughs> in the FA Trophy final. Uh, and I was supposed to go on holiday on the Saturday. Right. The final was the Sunday. I was fucking furious we got there. <laughs> I missed two days of my holiday. Yeah. I had to pay for two new flights, <laughs> which cost me more than the bonus for winning the fucking FA Trophy. <laughs> I played at Wembley, won at Wembley, yeah. and it cost me money. Yeah. <laughs> As you fucking love. I scored at Wembley. He scored two at Wembley, I think, in that game. He's... It was only one, to be fair. Yeah. Lady Connolly. Uh, yeah, and to be fair, I, I'm obviously joking a little bit. Not well, a li only a little bit because I were furious. But uh, <laughs> the fact that and and he don't even fucking think it's anything. My little my little boy who was probably seven, eight at the time, he was mascot yeah. or one of the mascots. So I've walked down out onto Wembley with me seven, eight year old boy, uh, which not many people can do. No. Uh, I don't even know if fucking Gary Neville's done that. Eh? <laughs> fucking asshole. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so that's that's the, the the thing, and and he's got his he's got to see his dad score at Wembley. Yeah. Uh, and same as I say, he don't really give a fuck. But <laughs> I, I I know, so that's that's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, but what I mean, it sort of sums up where York have been in the last few years. That it's sort of a bizarre season where you're winning. Cups and getting relegated, and you're, you know you're scoring at Wembley and getting relegated. It's sort of insane, but it's very typical of the highs and lows of being a York City supporter. I can say. Yeah, it's been a it's been a tough sort of four or five years for the club. But yeah, uh, should talk about something more interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm, there's nothing more interesting. Well, let's talk about. Um, let, I mean, you, let's talk about some of these uh, incidents and some of your pranks that you've you've played. We to me, you mentioned the. The poo in the bath in Magaluf, which comes up in the in the book. Do you want to tell us how that came about? <coughs> I mean, I think I I've got an idea. <laughs> took, took me trousers down. I squatted. <laughs> uh, no, basically, what it were, I was I was sharing a room with uh, with a lad who were quite prim and proper. Uh, why we got in the same room, I'll never know. But uh, we we've been out all day, and he got ready first, and he went out, and I thought, I'll tell you what. I'm, He'll not appreciate a shit in the bath. 
I don't think many people would appreciate the shit in the bath, but... So I have shit in the bath. Yeah. And then... So I've got ready. I've gone out. And... Uh, it, it was torrential rain in Magaluf. It, yeah. it was sort of major torrential rain. Um, and I don't know... Well, actually, we're in York, so probably not many people have been to Magaluf from here, will they? <laughs> Uh, there's a big hill in Magaluf, yeah. and there were two guys in full body wetsuits aquaplaning down the middle of this hill. Anyway, I've, uh, I don't know how, but I've nicked a bird. Uh, so I'm walking down the middle of the street holding this bird's hand. Uh, suddenly, bush, one of these aquaplaners wipes her out. <laughs> She's gone fucking flying, bless her. <laughs> so she's sort of four or five yards further down this hill. She's dropped a bag, a person, and everything. And so I thought, gentlemen, I'll go and pick her up. So I've picked her up. She's got all her uh, belongings and that in her bag. And she's got a cut on her arm. Uh, and Magaluf's a terrible place for infection, I'm told. So <laughs> I says, we need to get that cleaned up, love. Yeah. Uh, luckily, my hotel was just around the corner. Nice. <laughs> like you could have arranged the whole thing. Almost, if I meant <laughs> one of these aquaplaners to fucking wipe her out. Uh, so it gets back to the hotel, opens the door, goes in, says, the bathroom's on the right-hand side. <laughs> I went and lied in bed. Uh, next thing I hear is the <laughs> shower curtain. <laughs> What the fucking hell is that? <laughs> I says, what is it, love? What is it? She says, uh, there's a massive shit in your bath. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Thought, uh, think on your feet. Think. I says, you're fucking kidding me, the dirty bastard. I says, I went out before him. He's fucking shit at bath when I get in. <laughs> anyway, that was, that was a mackerel of story. But, uh, <laughs> I dread to think what she actually thought. Yeah. Nice girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's all part of the experience of being on holiday, I'm sure. Um, You've but, not lived. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't. I wish I could go back. Um, and, these, and there's also, the, with, in the book, there's the, uh, the golf cart story, which is, again, this sort of impetuous nature you have that can... I mean, back, it could have been a lot worse, this story, than it turned out, couldn't it? It pretty much sums me up, Yeah, really. I think it does. It sums me up, I mean... We're in Austria on a pre-season trip uh, and we've got an afternoon off and in two nights we're playing against Real Madrid. Fuck it, the Real Madrid, not yeah. the, no, the, the big one in Spain. We're playing yeah. against that fucker, right? <laughs> so uh, you've got Ramos playing, uh, Cannavaro, the keeper, the, he's, he's meant to be decent, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> yeah. uh, Me too. Casillas. Casillas, that's the one. Yeah. They've got fucking, they're, they're, it's proper Real Madrid. We've got, uh, we've got the afternoon off, so we went for a game of golf. Uh, so we've got buggies, obviously. We've got a big game in two days. Um, Gets to the top of this hill and, uh, oh, fuck it. So I put my foot down as fast as I could on this buggy. And we've got to the bottom and it's, it's sort of like a gravel track. I thought, fuck it, spin it. <laughs> I'm 27 years old here, by the way. I'm, yeah. not, a, I'm not a kid. <laughs> So I've spun the golf buggy uh, and I've realised probably half turn, we're in trouble. <laughs> so on, on the golf buggy, the, the driver's seat's on the left. So I've spun it that way. So I've bailed. <laughs> Bearing in mind, I've got our goalkeeper sat next to me <laughs> who's looking forward to playing against Real Madrid. Yeah. So I've bailed, anyway, the golf buggy's just gone boom, 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 boom. Done two and a half, two and a half rotations on its side, right? So the, goal, the, the goalkeeper, Steve Simonson, uh, so he's done two and a half rolls. So he's sort of popped his head up out of the thing. You know, like the old cartoons with the fucking birds. You can see the birds flying around his head. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, anyway, I looked at my leg and all my legs gashed and full of stones and stuff like that and... I weren't too worried about that, it was the golf buggy that I was most worried about. Yeah. The, the roof was smashed in, the screen was, was, was smashed, everything's bent on it. So I said to him, uh, 
we have to get this back. And we had to wheel it back. It wouldn't work. It was fucked. Uh, so we wheeled it back to the pro shop. Uh, it shows, look, we've had a bit of an accident. I think he shouted at us yeah. in Austrian. <laughs> Fuck knows what he said. Uh, so, luckily, I managed to play the game uh, against Real Madrid and I got kind of our own shirt, which were incredible. And, and then I got a bill. <laughs> <laughs> got a bill for the golf buggy. Yeah. Uh, which I think were about 1,200 quid. Yeah. So it were an expensive fucking ride around. <laughs> You got, you know, you lost a lot of weeks' wages one way or another, didn't you? Over the over the course of your career, there's a lot of fines coming in there. Yeah. Uh... I mean, <laughs> they must have kind of loved you to keep. The managers must have been. Didn't they? They. I mean, I know you didn't get on with some of them, but they must have to to keep on putting up with these things. The thing is, it, it was never anything too bad. No. You know what I mean? It weren't. Uh, it weren't. It's like sacking tackles, if you know what I mean. You know, like that's yeah. out of order. You sacked. Yeah. We're never that bad. I mean, I must have got fined in. Oh, I don't want to think about it in a monetary <laughs> aspect. Uh, I must have been fined five, six months' wages throughout yeah. my career, which. Uh, <laughs> Two grand is what the man claimed in the audience. So that's very, very, that's very rude, isn't it? I don't even think I were on that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one week might have been. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's... I mean, I find that you're very honest in the book about the managers you like and the managers you don't like. And, you know, you've been... You, you, were moved a, you moved a lot of clubs. I mean, I think... I mean, it's like when I used to be on TV, they kept moving the, our show around in the schedules to give the other programmes a chance, is what I used to say. But it feels... <laughs> You it feels a bit later, like later, <laughs> later. it feels a bit like you know that you were you were hopping from what you'd get on with the manager, and this is very like TV as well. You get on with someone, and then they they'd get sacked, or they'd move on to someone else, and then you you're inherited by someone else who doesn't necessarily want you. So the, whatever the previous manager sees in you will know understand. And I think there's a there's an element where you're a great player, but I think you you must have been really good for the camaraderie of the teams. And there's 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 a, what, again one of the managers talking about how. That he, he's not going to play you, but he likes having you around in the, in the dressing room. That's when I were a Premiership footballer, yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, Tony Pulis at yeah, Stoke. Uh, obviously, we, we got promoted with Stoke, which were fucking incredible. Yeah. Uh, incredible summer we had. Uh, and first day, Tony Pulis' pre season, he do the bleep test, which is basically this cone, cone, maybe 20, 25 metres. And you've got to run on the beep. And obviously the beep gets quicker and quicker yeah. quicker. And then when you miss the beep twice, that's you. So a reasonable standard for the bleep test <laughs> would probably be 13 and a half for your first. Yeah. Some of the lads are getting 16, 17, 18. I dropped out at level 9.8 <laughs> as a premiership footballer. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not just, I'm an actual player. Anyway, <laughs> so I weren't going to play much. No. You know what I mean? It was pretty obvious. And uh, the, 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 it was the pastor. It was the, when Preston, Preston was signing us. So uh, I went to see Tony Pulis. I just said, look, uh, I'd like to leave. And he went, you're not leaving? I says, why? He says, because I like you around the place. Yeah. I says, what, what do you mean? I, I like you around the place. <laughs> He said, I like having you in the dressing room. I says, I'm not a fucking performing puppet. You know what I mean? <laughs> I says, give me a breath. And, and like, I was on really good money. Of course, yeah. More than what fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> and he was more than happy for me to just come in and entertain the rest of the yeah. good players. Yeah, and uh, well, if they want anyone to do it, I'm happy to do that for any premiership yeah. from... <laughs> I'm not sure that they'd like me as much as they'd like you. I mean, I, I'm not going to shit in anyone's bath if that's part of the fun. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, I don't know, it's, 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 it's an amazing story of, of you know, that you, 
you, you completely stayed yourself. Uh, and, you know, you were, you've stood up to a lot of these managers. If you didn't like them, you would, you would speak your mind. So you, you're kind of an old-fashioned... You're quite an old-fashioned Yorkshireman in a way. You're quite an old-fashioned footballer in a way. But I think there's, there's something progressive and exciting about you as well. That you're a very, you're very interesting personality. Um, and I think that being, you know, standing up to the people who are paying your wages and who are deciding whether you're going to go in the team, that's, quite, that's pretty bold, but you just, that's just your, who you are? Or? Yeah, the thing about it is, we're, we're grown men. Yeah. Uh, just because you're my manager, I can still have an opinion, and I can tell you my opinion. If you don't like it, fair enough. Yeah. As long as I tell you in a respectful way, uh, I don't feel in not so respectful <laughs> ways. Uh, if, I said, I'm, if I was coming and say, look, I think we should be doing this. It's only for the benefit of the team. Yeah. If you can fuck me off and just deny you're full of shit, fair enough. But at least I've had my me, me opinion on, on what I think. Uh, and some managers will tell it on board. And <laughs> most of mine just fucked us off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to be a player who's not, who's not, doesn't want to do the fitness stuff that some of the managers want you to do and who's drinking before, you know, I'm not necessarily before games, occasionally before games. Uh, but, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's you, but you're going from one job to the next and did the, did the reputation not follow you some, in a way? I mean, did it, did it make it difficult to, to move on to some clubs sometimes? Did you feel you were going to not be, get the chance to move on? Not, not really. I mean, I think there's, there were, the first time I was out of contract in the summer, I was 32. Right. So throughout the, I'd still got a year, two years left on my contract before I moved to a, when, well, I'm, when I moved to another team, so it, it never got like that. It were, uh, I think, <laughs> I don't think I got reputation because I was never an arsehole. No. I, I weren't. <laughs> <laughs> That's my missus, that in crap. <laughs> yeah, I was never an, an actual arsehole. No. You know what I mean? So, what managers do is a manager will uh, identify a player, and if they've been in the game long enough, He'll know someone who knows him or has worked with him. Say, what? Oh, phone up. What's parking like? Uh, yeah, good as gold. Nice. Good in the changing room. Uh, shit at pre season. But he's going <laughs> to, you're not going to get any problems with him. Trouble, yeah. real trouble. So, yeah. so people, you get a reputation for being an all right lad. I yeah. Think. Which, not, which has helped me, I think. Yeah, well, I think I, I think you you know you you say it like you see it, and you're 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 blunt. Uh, if you're allowed to say that about Yorkshire people, still without that being offensive. You're blunt, or blunt. <laughs> <laughs> you're blunt. Uh, <laughs> my, my hearing's terrible. Sorry, I thought you said you're. But, up, yeah. but you know, you're delivering it. At, you're delivering what what the, is required. It's it's you know it, it's it's sort of it is fascinating. Um, let's talk. But like the, the times that you're well, you know you you're calling up. Physios and you know injuring yourself and in you know you, there's a there's a top point where you injure yourself on holiday and you cover it up or not even on holiday when you when you're training you could call it the physio I can't remember how you trip over the alarm clock or something in your room yeah that that were early doors yeah yeah that I were only sort of eighteen eighteen then uh, yeah we went to uh, pre season trip so you do a sort of a week at a week at uh, at the training ground and you have a week away yeah uh, sometimes longer. Uh, and Nigel Spatman, uh, the Barnsley manager, in his wisdom, took us to uh, Las Americas <laughs> for, for our pre-season trip. Okay. We were fucking banging the middle of the bastard as well. You know what I mean? We could hear it. We could hear it. And uh, as I said, I was only 18, uh, and, I, and I, mani I managed to not sneak out. All the rest of the older lads, they're out every night. Yeah. They're shimmying down drain pipes. Fire doors, the lot. Uh, and I didn't go out. And then the last night we were allowed to, uh, we were allowed a night out. We played a game, then we were allowed a night, a night out. And we, were, we got a, uh, a bit of a warm down the next day. So we played the game, we went out. Uh, so <laughs> I was like a fucking cage animal, by the way, for six nights in Las Americas and I'm stayed in. Yeah. Right? So the Friday night that we were allowed out, I fucking went ballistic. <laughs> Abs honestly, absolutely ballistic. Uh, so my alarm's gone off the next morning. I managed to get back to the hotel room fine, which obviously bonus. Uh, <laughs> so my alarm clock's gone gone off, and uh, I've got out of bed, and I've just fucking gone bush, fell over. 
Yeah. I'm thinking, Jesus, Grandma, I'm still pissed. So I tried getting up again, uh, fell over again. I twisted my ankle on the night out. Nice. Right. So we get down to the warm down. And I'm thinking I'm in I'm in trouble here. I managed to get through it, hobble through it. Like they just they just like um, they just said, well, fucking hell, he had a good night, didn't he? Yeah. Look at him, he's, he's even tail off in this jog. <laughs> so anyway, so we gets we gets to the airport, gets on the plane. Anyway, the ankle just went for massive. Um, so we get to Manchester Airport. The manager Nigel Spatman says, um, "You've got a game tomorrow." I'm like, All "Right, okay." I, I can't play this game tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fucking an- my ankle looks like elephant man. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. that, it's that bad. So I got the phys- I, said, I said to the physio who, who, uh, who I got on really well with, I said, Jim, I'm really sorry, but I've twisted my ankle on the night out. Said, right, okay, no problem. He says, uh, phone me in the morning and tell me that you've got up in the middle of the night, you've gone to the toilet and you've tripped up off your alarm clock. <laughs> I can work with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking fine for me. So I uh, got back, went to bed. Next morning, phones Jim. Uh, Jim, you never believe what's happened. <laughs> says, go on. <laughs> I said, I've gone up in middle of the night for a piss. I've tripped over my alarm clock and I've twisted my ankle. Right, no problem. Come in. I were out for three and a half months with this ankle. And, and in that time, where the manager got sacked. Uh, as you can imagine, we've been in Las Americas for a trip. We didn't win many fucking games <laughs> at the start of the season. So we got sacked and uh, the new manager came in and um, pretty much hated us. So that was the end of my Barnsley career. Right. And then that's, that's when I came to, yeah. to York. I actually nearly fucked it off. I was that close, just fucking it off. So I yeah. said, nah, it's not for me. Well, you nearly became a nursery nurse. Yeah. I mean, that seems... <laughs> There's a lot of things about you that seem... You think you're taking the piss. I do, but you trained to be able to become a nursery nurse. Yeah, I went to college to be a nursery nurse. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm not taking the piss, I swear to God. I were on placement. Yeah. I were, I were a placement at a nursery. Yeah. Uh, I had to do... <laughs> <laughs> It just seems, un- I know, it seems an unusual sight a step. Yeah, but Even I, went, I, mean, I did it from me. I went on uh, my you know, work experience from school at 14. I went to a nursery. Right, okay. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm at college. Uh, I had to do 10 hours a week placement. Uh, so I used to do sort of seven hours on a Wednesday and then an hour and a half, two nights a week. And I'd, I was at York at the time and I got injured. So the physio used to have me on the Wednesdays. So I think I were out for maybe two, two and a half months. Uh, so I weren't getting home until sort of five o'clock uh, tea time on a night. So I, I just couldn't physically get me 10 hours a week in because I went on a Wednesday. Yeah. So that's the reason that I'm not fucking nursery nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's their lot. It's the, it's the nursery nurse world's loss. Oh, like definitely. Family. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> Uh, and well, the, the other surprising, well, we're on surprising things, is you're very good friends with the, the novelist Jilly Cooper, who in fact writes, the, writes an intro, <laughs> an intro to your book. I mean, yeah, it sounds like... very good friends. Very I'm good like, friends. It she's sounds... more agile than what she looks, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not that good of friends. Uh, yeah. I think uh, she'd like to be that good friend. Yeah, well, she sends me Valentine's yeah. Day cards every year. Yeah. The only one I fucking get. <laughs> but she's written you a lovely intro to the book. Yeah. So she she was researching a book about football, was she? Yeah, that that was the, the thing. I, when I were at Forest Green, she she lives uh, not far from from Forest Green, and she started going to a few games and and what have you. And uh, she was writing a sort of a riders, Jilly Cooper's riders, yeah. football type book. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> They're very uh, rude, this audience. So I, I do apologise. So, uh, so I got, I got invited to her house one, one afternoon uh, she just wanted to know how football worked and stories and, and stuff like that uh, so I went up to her house her uh, assistant fetched little fucking cucumber sandwiches in, in triangles yeah. I'm like where the fuck am I you know what I mean what, what, I'm from Barnsley here what am I doing here 
I've got a fucking greyhound lying next to me. Just kept going up licking my face and you obviously can't say, Jilly, get your fucking dog off the road. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm in her house. Uh, so yeah, so we've been friends, friends ever since. I mean, yeah. she, she, invited, she invited us to a summer party. So we've gone to a summer party. Uh, there's fucking lords there, the, you know, <laughs> Majeski's there. And there's this guy, uh, and uh, oh, Richard, Richard. This is, this is my accent of Jilly. Yeah. Richard, Richard, come and meet this fucking lovely guy. Richard Maidley. Right? <laughs> <laughs> swear to God it was Richard Maidley. So he introduced me to Richard Maidley in her garden under a big fucking marquee and whatever and all that. It's tables. Yeah. Uh, so I started talking to Richard Maidley, right? And, I, and I, we got in, we got talking and that, and it, and it just went, uh, yeah, me and my wife, we're in television. <laughs> I went, fucking no shit, sir, lot. <laughs> so I've been watching you for the last fucking 15 years. I said, is, this, uh, is, is, is your wife come on up? We were quite good when the cans dropped out, weren't it, that time? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I might see Judy's Ju 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 whappers here. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm at fucking Jilly Cooper's party. Yeah. Jilly Cooper's invited this fucking scrope from Barnsley to her yeah. summer party. And I'm sat next to lords. Yeah. Pe men with titles. Yeah. But you know, that's, there's something, there's, a, there's some magic in there, John. There's, there's something about you. She said she's very complimentary about the book, which is, you know, it is a really good book, but for Jilly Cooper to compliment you on the way it's written. She says, like, in the in the voice, she's like, a lot of these books are really shit, but this is that generally, you, know, you, get, you don't want to get this job if someone asks you to write for because, you know, they can be bad books. But it's, to get Jilly Cooper saying it's a, a, a great book is is a massive compliment. Yeah. Uh, I just wish I'd have written it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'd have written, written it, it would have been written, shy. It would have been, been for them fucking nursery kids if I'd have written it. You've written it with someone else, but that is, yeah, but it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not actually, yeah. but it's um, I don't know. It, 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 the, it's I think there's a lot of similarities between uh, between football and what I do in a in a way. You know that it's you're you're it's an entertain it's a sport. <laughs> there's a lot of similarities, not all of them. There's a lot of you, you know, have to name them. There's a lot of, well, it's about the other side of it, right? Not not the running around bit. Uh, though I'm quite good at running. Uh, I couldn't do that test, I don't think. Uh, but, you know, you're getting young kids getting into it. And I think more so with football, though, is that they're, you know, they've, they've come from often just any background, a lot of war working class people, and then suddenly earning huge amounts of money, which happens with entertainment as well. And the, and the way that that can, you know, that can destroy people and that can send people over, over the edge. They become too full of themselves, which I don't think you ever did. You know, some bad, some bad stuff happens when you when you have you know, lots of drink and lots of money and lots of boo uh, alcohol, lots of drugs maybe and lots of girls. Oh no, I never never no. never went down the down the drug road. But, I mean, but those the you know, cause obviously it's you, you get tested sure, regularly. Sure. But I, I don't I never would have gone down that route anyway. I went down fucking every other route, but apart from that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's but I, I find the the books. Uh, you know, you you, ta you touch on the depression that you suffered when you were away from home, and you were very. You're, you know, you're very solidly Barnsley, <laughs> born and bred, and very loyal to Barnsley and Yorkshire. And when you're away from home for a season or two, then you, you it really, you really struggled, right? To yeah, it, it, it was when I was at Cardiff. Uh, I was just going through uh, my divorce, uh, so sh so my ex-wife had moved back north, and my little boy who was sort of two. Yeah, uh, I got this fucking lovely. Uh, far, farmhouse, a family house, and I'm in it on my own. Yeah, 230 miles away from home. Um, football was shit. Malcolm McKay, the manager, absolutely hated me. Uh, and it, and it were it were horrendous. I used to finish tra I used to finish training and I'd go home. I'd just get in bed, and then I'd get up next day for training. And fucking Malcolm McKay would be sh absolutely battering me. Fucking fuck, yeah, fuck. and I just totally ignore him. Yeah. And then I go home and I get in bed, and I, and I like I, I was on the most money I'd ever been on, and it just didn't make a blind bit of difference. The fact that I was away from my little boy, 
The divorce bit, that, that, was, I, that I was fine with that fucking... Should have happened fucking three years earlier. <laughs> Uh, the divorce bit, I, w- I could cope with that, but yeah. it, w- it was being that far away from a little boy. Yeah. Uh, football was shit, and and and, and that's how I was. So I went to see the doctor, and I says, I, I think I'm struggling. Uh, he says, right, he referred me to a, di- a different doctor, and then he, he put me on some tablets, and things were a little bit better. And I was very fortunate that I managed to get on loan to Doncaster for a month, so I could move home. Yeah. And then I got on loan to Huddersfield for two months over Christmas, which was fucking sensational. Like, you know what I mean? I'm I'm home for Christmas. This this sums up how fucking unlucky I am, by the way. <laughs> right. So I went to Huddersfield in League One. Huddersfield have not got beaten. They've not <laughs> lost a game for fifty four games. Yeah. That's a fucking lot of games, by the way. <laughs> My first game, Charlton Athletic away. Charlton Athletic 2, Huddersfield 0. <laughs> My debut for Huddersfield. <laughs> Not got beat for 54 games. Second game, at home to Brentford, I think. Huddersfield 0, Brentford 1. I never played another fucking game for them. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. They got beat. Not got beat for 54, they got beat the 55th and the 56th, <laughs> the ones that our bastard played in. Uh, so luckily, I got back for Christmas, uh, and then that ended, uh, and then I got uh, to Scunthorpe on loan for sort of two and a half months. So for, luckily for sort of six, six and a half months out of the nine month season, I was back home. And soon as I got home, home I was fine. Yeah. Fucking good as gold. Uh, it was just being down there and being away from, from my little boy mainly. Yeah, but it's you know that's it, it's it's tough. That, I mean, that's again, that's what, those are the bits that you sort. Of, when I'm you know I'm I'm travelling a lot of my job, not to the same extent as that where you're based somewhere else for a long, long time. Not usually, but it, it's it's difficult. And you're you know you're someone who's clearly very you know the loyalty you have to your 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 boy especially, but to your hometown and and it's you know it's 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 wonderful. And you also got quite heavily you got quite into gambling though as well. I think it's when you know you. You suddenly got loads of money, and it's properly lots of money, right? You, you talk I about not suddenly, not not suddenly. Well, uh, sort of when I when I sort of went from League Two up to the Championship, yeah, uh, and it just carried gradually got more and more from there. Yeah. I, I'm another fucking. This is, this is how unlucky I am at gambling. Fucking hell! I, I tell you, I'm un, I'm very unlucky. <laughs> so we're playing Scunthorpe away Tuesday night, and we're in a hotel in Scunthorpe. Monday night and the Austri- uh, the American Open, the, you know the tennis, yeah. American, whichever fucking big one is of that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Roger Federer's won it six years in a row, six years in a row, and he's in the final against Del Potro, right? So he's won every match for six years and then another tournament apart from the final. Yeah. Never bet on tennis. <laughs> I thought, fucking Roger Federer cannot lose this. Roger Federer got beat in five sets, didn't he? I had the biggest bet I've ever had in my life on it. Yeah. And he got fucking... And I got a game that next night. And I'm up at fucking three o'clock in the morning watching this American tennis shit. <laughs> 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 but is the, is the gambling something... Are you still, are you still, are you still a gambler? Or do no, you, no, I don't, I don't gamble now. No, uh, I, I went to see someone about it and, and got that sorted. And it's... People will not, not actually understand. People will say, well, why do you gamble if you're a football and you've got all this money and all that? It's, it's more, you sort of, three o'clock on a Saturday or quarter to eight on a Tuesday, that is when you are fucking working, your eyes are, your, your eyes are kite. And all you're trying to do, basically, is get the same feeling as scoring a goal. Or playing in front of 25, 30, 30, 30. The money, the money, asked, the money's, you're not asked about the money. It's just the, the sort of, the buzz and the thrill of it. I mean, like what, you look, you look at sort of pop stars, rock stars, why do they take drugs? Yeah. Because they're on a stage in front of 50, 60, 70,000 people. There's nothing else in their life that can recreate that, yeah. that feeling. <clears throat> so they just take whatever they, they take. Yeah, and for for footballers that they, they can't do that, so gambling's your way out. You get a lot of time off. Uh, 
So, so that's why a lot of footballers go down that route. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, but it, it, even when you're playing, you know, when you say you got there gradually, but you, you're earning more a week than, you know, you would have dreamt of, like, at school. You're, suddenly, you're, you're being paid thousands of pounds a week, right, at pretty much any level, or a thousand pounds a week, even, like... It's a, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad no, money, I mean, especially for a seventeen, eighteen-year-old. You know what I mean? That's you wouldn't expect to. Yeah, when, when I when I when I signed for I, when I signed for York, I think I signed for eight hundred pound a week mm-hmm. at nineteen-year-old in two thousand. Yeah, I mean, we went into administration when that was the first time we were at York. We went into administration, right, and we did, we got paid two weeks' wages in. Three months, I think it were. I can't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I, I got loads of money at bank. Yeah. I live with my mum and dad. Happy as Larry. Still going out three times a week. Yep. The rest of the lads who've got mortgages and all that commitments and everything, they're, fuck, they're pulling their hair out. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, okay, we'll get paid eventually, won't we? <laughs> and that's our, that's our hour. Yeah. Um, there's, there's so much to talk to you about, and there won't be time. Uh, but uh, we'll mention, well, I'll, the, I really, really recommend the book. Feed the Beast. You also do a fantastic football podcast, Under the Cosh, which uh, is, uh, is very worth listening to. Um, uh, as well as the... I, lo- I love the story about you um, being late for... You got late for training, the way you, the way you got out of uh, that. And, I mean, this is... The, it just the, You're a very cheeky man. <laughs> and you seem to get... But you seem to get away with that. That's what I mean. You seem to get away with the... You know the che- the cheekiness of managing to get that injury, that, getting that that physio to cover for you when you're out for three and a half months is was that was a that's down to a lot. Well, it's a struggle. Stroke the, a lot. But you know, not he wouldn't have done that for everyone, right? I don't think would he. That's a maybe, nice maybe not. That's a nice gesture. Um, this the way you got out of this being late for training. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, timekeeping one, never my forty. Yeah. Uh, and I, I used to travel so uh, I think it was maybe 100 miles to, from, from Barnsley to Preston over the M62 on a morning uh, and come home at night. And that, fuck, that 62 was absolute torture, uh, as, as probably everybody will know. And it used to take me with, if I, if I didn't hit too many red lights, it used to take me an hour and 42 minutes. <laughs> so if I hit like, Four more red lights than what I'd given myself time for. I was fucked, I was late. <laughs> uh, so I woke up one morning and it was snowing. It had been snowing. I'm like, oh no. Uh, there's no chance I'm going to get in. So I tried to get in. I thought, I'll not go on the 62. I'll go through Uddersfield, the, the back way. Hopefully that'll not be as bad. Anyway, it was fucking rammed. <laughs> Absolutely rammed. So it got to sort of just enough time for me to be in Huddersfield but get to work. And I know I'm fucked. I'm, I have no chance of getting in. I'm looking at... I had to be in for 10 o'clock. I'm looking at 12 at the earliest. Yeah. So I thought, right, what can I do? I'll, uh, I'll say I've had a car crash. <laughs> <laughs> so phones the assistant manager up. Rob, you never believe what's happened. Some fucking arseholes hit me in the snow. I've had a crash. Are you all right? You're, 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 honestly, my neck's a bit sore. <laughs> But I'm all right. But obviously, I'm not going to be able to get into training. Don't worry about it, mate. Honestly, it's fine. As long as you're all right, get everything sorted. So it turns back. So it gets me off home. And, and I realise that <clears throat> I'm not be able to use my car for the next week or so. Yeah. <laughs> but it's in the garage getting fixed from this imaginary car crash. <laughs> so I had to take a different car for it for a week and a half. But the, the lads knew what I was like. And... Uh, <laughs> Believe it or not, they didn't believe me. <laughs> right, weird. So we, we, we were playing away on a Friday night. We're in a hotel and the lads are wanting to find me sort of 500 quid for, being, for not turning into training. Yeah. And I'm like, I've had a fucking car crash. No, you've not. I, I have had a fucking <laughs> car crash, mate. And I, and I, I, I adamant that I'd had this car crash. I says, right, I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll, uh, we'll put it to the vote. <laughs> Who gets in the hotel on the Friday night, I get one of them flip charts. <laughs> So I'm drawing streets on these flip charts. My car, another car coming that way. <laughs> Arrows. It were like, you know, like them, you know when you, with, with kids, yeah. you know when you got one of them little things where you put your trains and your yeah, cars yeah. around. It was like one of them yeah, yeah. On, a, on a sheet of paper. 
And uh, I says, right, I'll put it to the vote. This is what happened. <laughs> uh, vote. And it went round, I think it was uh, maybe nine all. Right. And I've got one player left. <laughs> so if he said, uh, if he said it's, a f it's false, yeah. it'll cost me 500 quid. <laughs> if he says it's true, I weren't getting fined. Luckily, I got on really well with this kid, so I never, got, <laughs> I never got fined a penny for it and got away with it. And then, obviously, up until recently, I, obviously, I've told all the lads that were at law, a total fabrication. <laughs> <laughs> the fact you have to go through all that, the fact that they know it's... Yeah. <laughs> they basically know you're lying, and then they still go through it all, and you still get away with it. Well, the fact that I went in a different car, weren't yeah. it? <laughs> That's good. I was going to ask you how they didn't stick at the car, and then... That's the answer, but there we go. But uh, I don't know. It's um, yeah. It's it's. I don't know. It, there's there's it, there's something very appealing about you. I completely understand why everyone uh, uh, like. And not, I don't say puts puts up with this stuff, but it's because it's not exactly that, is it? It's it's fun to have you around, and you were good at the job as well. And so now you. What's what's the plans now? You've, you've the the playing days are over. Oh yeah, thank yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the playing days are done. Uh, we do the podcast. Uh, yeah. Apparently, there's not well. You won't think looking at him, but apparently, there's some money in it. Uh, <laughs> so we'll try that. Cup uh, <laughs> cheap. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel, and then uh, do a bit of afternoon speaking. Yeah. Uh, and there was. Would you be coming? Because you're so hard on the managers you had. And would you ever consider being a manager? Is that something you're? You sort of say in the book you'd like to give it a go. But. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know if I'd be too old school for it and too, <coughs> a bit too nasty. Uh, Do you think you would be nasty? I think you'd be too nice for it. I don't nah, know. nah, nah, I'm no. a hor I'm a, honestly, I'm an horrible bastard. Yeah. I swear to you, <laughs> on the pitch, I'm a horrible, horrible bastard. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if somebody needs a, 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 a bollocking, I'll give them a bollocking. Sure. Uh, but the, the kids can't take it now. They're right. all soft as a tub of spunk, a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> they really, really are. You fuck, you fuck, you batter someone, right? <laughs> and, and then they, they just go under. Which is totally different to when I started. And you can borrow that one if you want. Yeah, you can keep that one. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I think I'd be... The lads would hate us. Yeah. Because they can't take... Criticism and mate, we used to get fucking annihilated. You fucking useless bastard. Imagine being in a normal job and your manager saying, You fucking useless bastard. <laughs> mate, you'd be straight into HR, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd be getting fucking, you'd be getting like comic relief check, wouldn't you? <laughs> there you go. Mrs. Smith, fucking 90,000 pounds for being called an arsehole. Yeah. I mean, it's a weird job where you're, you know, where the, your wages are being docked for you. You know, they can just say you're not going to get paid for four weeks or whatever. Yeah, well, that doesn't really happen in many it's, jobs. It's, unless it's summer really bad, yeah, tools, yeah. tools the maximum. Nice. But even if I were guilty, I'd still fucking take it to PFA and argue. Yeah. <laughs> I would argue. It's not right, this. Yeah. You're a cheeky fucker, and it's good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's a... Uh, well, look, we, we, we talked about it enough. The book's fantastic. Do, uh, I listened to it on audiobook, which I think you should have done yourself. You were saying backstage you'd like to have a crack at it, but they, we, there's, a, there's an actor playing you. He's yeah. good, but uh, I'd like to have heard you do it. Well, I, they said it was, I were, it were out of my fucking pay grade, I think. They said you, it's not as easy as what they say. It, <laughs> so, yeah, it's just talking. It's, right. mm. it's actually just reading. I think that's... That's when I struggle. That's, that's <laughs> Some of the, one of the little kids' books at nursery, well, fine. <laughs> Just pointing at the pictures and the sheep and the cows and stuff and all that. Well, I, I really hope, you know, you've been doing some punditry on the York City game tonight, which I, I've got a gambling problem. I put £10 on that, and that's a lot of money for me. And I, and I pulled out of the two. I, put, I, I didn't have faith in my own decision. Cashed in for 30, well, 32 quid. I could have had £119. You can get another two of them jumpers then, can't you? <laughs> hey? This is a very designer <laughs> jumper. Um, <laughs> uh, there's, there's so many more stories in the book. It's, uh, and please write one just about food. Uh, and and no, no, no football at all. Just about the times you've been annoyed about not getting what you wanted to eat. <laughs> I would definitely read that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give a massive round of applause. Yorkshire's jump bucket! Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. I'll be around there in a sec.
How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>